Peace, Ashe, Islam, Namaste, Rahu Bet, Asalaamu Alaikum, Walaikum Salam, Onichiwa. You know what? Going for it, family, I'm going to stop saying Konichiwa because that doesn't mean, that, that's not a greeting that means thank you. I'm trying to say Ni hao, um, Aloha, Ola, Grand Rising, Ubuntu. Whatever the greeting is in your respective language, I am your brother Crumb here for another installation of Crumb TV. So family, as always, you know what I'm about to say. You can catch me on YouTube under Crumb TV. Definitely go check me out over there. I'm also on Instagram, Crumb TV underscore. So be sure to check me over there. As usual, family, you already know, I'm on Cash App as well, Money Sign Crumb TV. And if you don't have Cash App, I'm definitely on PayPal. Just use the email, crumbsnatcher908 at gmail.com. This video, as all the others for the month of October, is being brought to you by Hidden Colors 5. I do have a sponsorship, family. Hidden Colors 5, the documentary, is, is backing me. So go check them out on positivevibesva.com. Um, and of course, I'm here, family, on Racebook. You know, go and see me talk that talk and go and see them react to it. And then you'll know why they call it race book. Um, so with that said, family, this video is called Connecting to Higher Self. Now, family, this is a, um, a oldie but goodie in a way, because I want to bring back the family, uh, my sister. I want to bring back my sister. Her name is Bridget Rowe. We did a video together already called The Power of the Third Eye. She did part part one, I did part two. So um, she's definitely already on my platform. With that said, um, without further ado, I'd like to bring the sister on if I may. Peace and love, how are you sis? Hello Chrome, how are you? <laughs> all is well, all is well. I wanna first thank you so much for gracing us with your presence. Um, just to let the family know, you are an official uh, published author um, and you, um, uh, started everything uh, based off the organization that you created called Salt of the Earth Pub Publishing. Yes, yes I did, yes. Now, uh, sis, before we get into, you know, um, connecting to higher self, can you tell the family about you and some of the work you've done already? Okay, yes, of course. I. Really, I started off my journey just really speaking on YouTube channels, on panels at churches, at Essence events after I published my book. Uh, just wherever I felt the need for young ladies who needed to learn more about love, about energy. And I just pretty much speak from my heart. You know, I want to, people to feel the energy that comes from my higher self and meet people where they are in an effort to help them evolve to their higher self because that's what I feel as though we're all doing here in the physical reality, trying to evolve to our higher self and connect back to who we are in our full totality of power. So like I say, I'm on YouTube, I'm on uh, Facebook, I do panels, um, I do consultations, seminars. If I'm, if I'm asked to come somewhere, I go to speak and I, I like to share my experiences. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, with that said, you know, um, you had done, uh, um, what well, you had wanted to speak on a particular topic, which, you know, as soon as you had said it, my antenna started tweaking, you know, um, <laughs> because more often than not, I'll get somebody who will say, you know, Hey, you know, crumb, I'm just waking up, you know, I, I like what you're doing, Crumb. It's awesome, but I'm just now waking up. And Crumb isn't the type of person where it's 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 that level. They want something to say, okay, how do I get there? Yes, so when you were connecting the higher self, it was like, okay, it was a no-brainer, you know, because right. a lot of the family they want to get there, but there's no clear path. Can you tell us how you did it? Right. And I feel like my story, and that's what I want to share today. I feel like my story is just going to be that, my story. And so maybe pieces from my story can help you along your story, but it's going to be your journey. And ultimately, it is about you and, and where you are and how you feel. And so that's what I want to share today, my story. 
And, and I would say before I even begin sharing my story, the purpose of me sharing it is to let you all know that we all have like this internal GPS uh, system, a GPS internally built from our higher self and our lower self. And it all is always guiding us. It's guiding us based upon how we feel. This is how we know, you know, when we're on track or off track, but because of our feelings. And so this internal GPS system tells us throughout the journey, no, you turn here, stop, slow down, you know, speed up, you're going the wrong way. And so that's why I feel as though it's so important to pay attention to the way that you feel. Pay attention to your story, not my story, not about everybody else's story, because we have to realize in this physical reality that the energy of it all is the thing that really matters. How we feel really, really matters because the physical essence is really point zero 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 one of this experience. The energy of it all is the ninety nine point nine 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 nine. So how you feel in your journey Wherever you're starting from, whatever your story is, 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 is all that matters. It's like your higher self guiding you. Your higher self is equivalent to the Anunnaki self. It is equivalent to the God self, the future self. You come in the physical reality at the lower self on a journey to higher self, on a journey to remember who you are and connect. We have to remember in our mind through brain capacity, and we have to remember by joining lower self to higher self. So. Here we go. I'll start off with my journey. You know, despite where I am right now in my physical reality, there was a moment in my life, you know, when I suffered with my health and my weight and and in love issues, all of these things, I felt this ease and disharmony between higher self and lower self. And so as a little girl, I spent a considerable amount of time in, in the church because my mother was and still is a minister. My mother's a minister. My, my uncle was a pastor. My aunt is a pastor, brother, the drummer, you know. And so me spending all this time in church, you know, I sat on the front row of the church. I played so many roles in the church. I was a pastor's assistant. I was an usher. I was a camera girl. I was a treasurer. I was in choir, all these different roles. And so I it feel as though I had a front row seat of watching people, you know, we, we were in this healing and deliverance service. And so the role that I remember the most as the usher and the healing and deliverance part of the service, I would have the little cape and I would put the little cape on the people, on ladies, if they passed out and caught the Holy Ghost, right? But as a little girl, as a little girl, I was listening because these people would talk to the apostle, they would talk to the pastor and tell them the what they wanted from God, you know, what their prayer request was. And I was listening. And with my head down, I would say to myself, man, when I grow up, I don't want to be like these people. Why is it that the people that love God so much got to hurt so bad? Because I witnessed this throughout the church, you know, all the time. And so they would have these pastors that would come and they would prophesy to me and they would tell me that I was going to be a speaker, that I was going to travel the world and that I was a sleeping giant and all this and that in that. And I would say to myself, no, 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 I don't want to be like my mom. When I grow up, I want to get up out of here. I don't want a part of this Jesus stuff all my life. And so it, it, I felt this harmony there, but I stayed there. You know, I'm a child at this point. And not only that, so I come up with this brilliant idea. I said to myself, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to stop speaking. I'm going to mute my mouth so they won't see the power inside of me. So I'll never be this person that they say that they saw in me. I didn't want to be that person. And so not only that, so now I'm holding on to my speaking. You know, I become more introverted in my ways. And outside of that, my father and mother divorced when I was five years old. So I was already holding on to pain and hurt. I was already just ease and just harmony and felt like I missed out on my first love, my father. And so I was trying to already suck that up. So now I'm sucking up my voice. I'm sucking up this broken heart from daddy's little girl, you know, not having that experience of first love. So I'm basically stagnating my energy, going back to the energy side of it, all things are energy. So I'm sitting there stagnating my energy. And so I started to experience this ease and disharmony in my physical body because all sickness and disease start in the spiritual realm first. Correct. So when you get this stagnated energy in the spiritual realm, 
by not speaking your truth, it can show up in your physical reality as thyroid issues. You know, you get this 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 this, this, this issue in the spiritual realm, but not wanting to love, and I don't I don't love nobody, and my daddy left me. It shows up with heart issues, low blood pressure. You know, because this is your heart chakra, breast cancer. And so that's what really was happening to me. I was feeling this ease and this harmony in my physical self. And so years were past. I'm still in the church. I grew older and I said, you know, I, I'm not getting the answers that I want from this church stuff. And I wanted to seek truth for me, not because pastor had said it, because my mom had said it, the doctor had said it. I wanted to know. I wanted to go like they said in a biblical text. I wanted to study and show myself for proof. Ooh. I wanted to rightly divide the word of truth and what it meant for me. And so I'll never forget, I went to my mother one day and I told her, I said, I, I just need to talk to her. And I just expected, you know, her to just, just be ready just to go ahead and just hear what I had to say. Because I'm introverted at this point. I don't really talk. So when I begin to open up my mouth, I wanted everybody to hear what I had to say. <laughs> And, you know, when you come up in church or whatever, you, you have the people around you and they'll always tell you, well, did you talk to Jesus? That was always the first thing that people would say. But did you talk to Jesus? So, and my mother told me that. She said, had I talked to Jesus and not in disrespect, but with anger, built up that anger energy inside of me. I told my mother, I said, look, don't you tell me to go talk to no Jesus. I want to talk to my mother. And so we talked about the problems, this, 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 ease, this ease and this harmony that I was feeling in my physical self. We talked and I walked away that day. And that day, that was the day that I walked away from church, so to speak, from religion to find truth for me. And so now all of a sudden I am now what they would call in the church, the, black, the backslider. You know, now I'm going to hell, you know. Now, you know, now I'm, I'm on the devil's side. <laughs> I work for the devil. I went from working to Jesus. Now I'm working for the devil, y'all. And so I didn't understand that. I didn't understand that, but it was okay. And, you know, so I just wanted to find truth, though. And I'll never get up. I, I, I prayed that day and I said, you know, God, Jesus, Yeshua, Buddha, Krishna, I don't know who I'm talking to no more. The ancestors, the Anunnaki, but I know something is there because I feel this energy. Now, whatever and whoever you are, I want you to remember what I did in my youthful time because I tried to do good. I tried to wear the dresses. I tried to not be the sinner. I tried to contain my energy as best as I knew how. But I just don't understand. And so I was feeling bad. And all, and all I was asking, I was like, God, I, I never really came to you. I never really got in that line, that church line, asking for all these things. But today I just ask you to heal my body. Because at this particular morning, minute, moment in my journey, I had stagnated my energy so much that I was feeling like so weak, like I was gonna die. And I just was like, you know what? I'm tired of going to the doctors. They keep telling me I, I have I have the thyroid issue, but what, what is the cure for this thyroid deal? What is the cure for, for this low blood pressure? What's the cure for this irritable bowel syndrome? Tell me, heal me. If I have something, heal me. So I was going to God, I was saying, God, just heal me from this so I can get my mental capacity back in order to understand this, this, this thing called life, understand why I'm here. What, what am I born to do? And so I asked for the healing and I said, you know what, nonetheless, if, if you choose not to heal me, God, I'm ready to die. And I would, I remember I would tell my children, I would tell them, look, you take care of your brother. You look out for your brother and you love your brother. And I love you and I will always be with you. You know, I, I would, this is how I felt. This is how I think I felt. But nobody never asked me what I was eating. <laughs> nobody asked me what I was thinking. You know, we had supper plates. We had chitlins. We had red beans and rice, you know, in church all the time. We were always cooking and going by somebody's house that could throw down supposedly cooking soul food that wasn't good for my soul. Nobody never asked me nothing about that. But I was on my way to hell and I was just ready to die. You know what? Look, I did my best here. Get me up out of here. <laughs> because I felt like I had already been through hell. Stagnating my energy. Missing out on my first love. Watching all of these people that love God so much. Just, just go through so much pain. And if I was going to grow up, I didn't want to be like that. Go ahead and just take me now. Yeah, God, you don't really have to heal me. Just get me out of this misery. So I would go to bed. And surprised that I woke up the next day still intact. But one day I did something 
something different. Just like the people that would always get in line. They will be the people that will get in line. They'll get the healing. And some of them, they'll be, they'll, they'll go on. They'll be blessed. They'll heal or whatever. But then there was that other type of person that would get back in that line again in that healing and deliverance line on rinse and repeat over and over. But I decided not to be like that person. I decided I wanted to do something different. So, sure. okay, so I got up and I said, okay, okay, I'm still here. I'm still alive in the physical. Okay, well, I'm gonna do something different today. Today, I'm gonna I'm gonna clean up the refrigerator, the freezer, and throw all of that meat away because really I felt to the core, okay, well, every time I eat the steak and potatoes, I feel a little stagnated with my energy. Every time I eat this pork chop and then these and these red beans and rice, I just feel a little weak. You know, because I grew up on Popeyes and cereal and all that crazy stuff. No fruits and vegetables, herbs and spices. You know, the kind that's supposed to be for the healing of the nation. I ain't have none of that in the church. You know, I grew up with the Popeyes, two-piece, spicy, white, you know, mashed potatoes and jalapeno pepper. Because I'm from New Orleans. You know, we love that chicken from Popeyes. <laughs> anyway. I was changing that. I wasn't going to be the everything in the church that we didn't do in the church. I was every day trying to do. I didn't know what I was doing in the, in the beginning, y'all. I didn't. I went to the store and I bought everything that I didn't ever see before. I bought that kale, that nasty kale that's hard to chew to me. I still don't care for kale, but I ate it because I, I felt like, okay, it's green. It must have some chlorophyll, some magnesium inside of it. I knew about that. I'm going to get some papaya and I'm going to even eat the seeds inside the papaya. It was nasty as I don't know what, but I'm eating because I need some something different. I need something different because the Popeyes wasn't fixing me. I wasn't getting energy from the old way, so I'm trying to do a new way. And so that's what I begin to do. And I begin to educate myself about it. And I and what a, a beautiful thing was that I begin to find myself. I begin to get my strength back and my mental clarity back. So once I got my strength and my mental clarity back, it was on then. Then I then I was able to obtain information. Then my attention span wasn't 30 seconds no more. I lasted longer. So then I wanted to read and indulge myself into the spiritual essence of everything, this soul part of me. So in church, we, we, we couldn't we couldn't learn anything about dark energy. Well, guess what? It's time to learn about dark energy now. It's time to learn about numerology, astrology. It's time to read the book of Enoch, the Dead Sea Scrolls, the, 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 the laws of the universe, the beginners, the beginner's guides of alchemy, the laws of Mayat. You know, spiritual conjuring for wicked, for witches. I wanted to know it all. I won't know nothing about no Eve no more. I want to know about Lilith, Adam's first wife. You know, and so I indulged myself in all of these things because I was told I couldn't do these things back in the day. Why? I wanted to know for me the difference. Because the little girl that was in the church was just trying to just, just what pastor said and say, just only believe, only believe. When it didn't register a lot of things to me, it didn't make sense a lot of things to me. So I, so with this new knowledge and understanding, you know, I, I started to, I started to make my own vegan dishes. You know, I started to to grow in my journey where I was making my own deodorant, my own lotions, my own moisturizer for my hair. You know, my own pet, my own pain medicine medication, my own detoxes or whatever. Because I won't be no lab rat no more. Taking this drug, and then you've got to take this drug because the other drug is going to counteract that drug, and then you're going to get an infection because you was on antibiotic. I didn't want to be no lab rat no more. I wanted to learn and, 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 and consume these things because I knew what they done, did for me and inside of me. And so that's what I did. In my physical reality, I change and it, and it goes in time. See, a lot of people go against the biblical text, but I feel as though they have some hidden truth inside of it. It ties where it says, let this mind be in you. Think it not strange to be equal with God, you know, or the renewing of the mind. The allegory text about the stories of Jesus healing. He said, go and sin no more. Your faith has made you whole, you know, because all is mental. And so when I begin to change my mind, change the way that I looked at things, the things outside of me began to change. And so much so that my children, you know, my children saw it inside of me. They saw the transformation, the, the lower self meeting higher self. Because, see, you cannot have an experience with God, the creator, the universe, source, energy, or whatever you call it, and still be the same. Something about you is going to change. And people outside of you are going to see that change. And just like in the biblical text, the allegory story, the first miracle, the allegory story of Jesus going to a wedding with his mother. 
in, in Cana in, in, of Galilee or whatever, and they were out of the wine. And the mother said, do what he said, do what Jesus said. And, and Jesus, this allegory text story says, woman, don't you know it is not my season, it's not my time yet. But the woman, the mother in that allegory text, in that allegory text saw the change, the, the transformation, the water turning into wine, the, the lower self meeting higher self, the blood being renewed, the, the new self, the new being that the Christ conscious one in that allegory story had become. And so my children saw this in me. So that they asked me to write a book. This isn't something that I just said, oh, I'm gonna write a book tomorrow, y'all. No, it's, it's others around me that saw this inside of me. And I, I, I gave to crumb the, the text from my oldest son that for him to inspire me to write a book. They will give to me the, um, the Facebook lives. I was always introverted. I wasn't thinking about no Facebook, no other people. <laughs> They would give me Facebook lives on their phone and be like, here, ma, say something to the people, say anything. You were born for this. So oftentimes in your journey, other people outside of you, they could see the greatness inside of you. They could see the transformation inside of you. But the thing is, you got to pay attention to the way you feel because how you feel matters. Throughout the whole duration of it, I was just going and meeting my higher self. That was my higher self beckoning for me the whole time. Letting me know, based upon how I felt, that I was out of sync with higher self. So in, if I look back over the journey, I can say, daddy was supposed to leave me. See, nothing just happens for you to just be in a circle to help just you and your children. Because we are a collective consciousness. When I move, you move. So daddy was supposed to leave me. I was supposed to experience the broken heart in order to be in a position to help other people learn how to love and forgive. How selfish of me to think that that was just because of me. It's for the collective. I was supposed to be introverted in order for me to meet higher self and be able to come to a place where I can share my life with others. At one point in my journey, I, I wore glasses. At one point in my journey, I was at this ease and disharmony with myself. I went from being a heavy meat eater to vegan. And all of these things, every part in the journey was necessary. And I paid attention throughout the whole journey of my internal GPS system is what was happening in order for me to meet, reach higher consciousness or higher self. Because all of this is just energy and it goes back to the energy, whether it is eating low frequency foods versus higher frequency food, whether it is thinking, whether it is thinking of about the broken heart or the love being renewed, it's all energy. And we look at God as, as this big source, this universe. God is the most powerful form of energy that there is. So we're just on a journey in the physical reality of increasing our frequency is what this is all about here. This is how I look at it. And you'll never get it wrong if you pay attention to how you feel because how you feel matters. You are energy and you are powerful. And you are who you say you are. Now, I wanted to jump in right there because one thing uh, I found to be very powerful. Because, you know, <laughs> even with, with, with me, I remember one time I had made a live and, and I was so embarrassed. I went back and deleted it. And then I got a flood of people, a flood of people. They was like. What happened to the live? What happened to the live? And I said, I deleted it because I was so embarrassed. You know, I, I got it wrong. And oh. then everybody just started attacking me. Yeah. And I deserved it because yeah. they were like, what do you mean you got it wrong? You never get it wrong. Insane. You never get it wrong, bro. And I was one of them. I told you about yourself. <laughs> you never get it wrong. You never get it wrong. So um, you had made a PowerPoint and um, you uh, said the journey, you will never get it wrong. And then like, you know, and I know there's more slides to the PowerPoint. However, yeah. just that part, you know, cause one of my biggest problems is that I believe my doubts and I doubt my beliefs and, wow. and I'm looking for this picture perfect process. No, no. 
you should share it all with the world because that's what we're here. We're here to show others what creation is all about. We are creators. And so even with your wrongs, you can look at your wrongs and be like, hey guys, I thought this was it. But wait, I think this is it instead. And then tomorrow, this is going to be instead, it instead because you know what? The rabbit hole runs so deep. There is really no right or wrong. That's how deep. And that's how multi-dimensional the rabbit hole really is, Crumb. <laughs> we'll probably think in, in years to come, we'll probably everybody is gonna be on the vegan thing probably in years to come. Then then it could be like, wait, you eat? We supposed to be living off the sun. You know? <laughs> because that's gonna be the new right for our physical reality. We never get it wrong though. We always this is energy. We're always expanding. And the expansion is going to keep on continuing over and over, lifetime after lifetime. Thanks. Yeah. Yeah. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Bear with me two seconds. You know, I'm just, I'm going back to my, you know, when I was a kid. Damn, Gina. I don't know. The TV show Martin. Martin. Oh, my God. Okay. It's a lot for me to take in. And, you know. I invited you on a platform and I knew it was going to be powerful, but my apologies. I, I wasn't ready. I wasn't yeah. ready. Yeah. Okay. That's beautiful. I'm thankful for being here, Crum. I really appreciate you. And I admire all the time. I tell you, I admire your passion so much. I admire your passion. Thank you. Thank you. Um, if you wanted to continue, I'll get out your way. Also, uh, if you want to go to the PowerPoint, you just let me know where I, I'm following you. I'm good. I just really wanted to just share that piece of me. I don't want to be long. I don't like long videos, you know, because of the attention span. I like to leave things that can resonate with people and, and show myself and meet people where they are. I'm not here trying to be greater than or perfect. I'm on a journey too, just like everybody else. And so I just put some pictures up there showing, you know, when I was at what, 162 pounds and I might look good on the outside, but I was toe up from the flow up on the inside, y'all. <laughs> I was experiencing this ease and this harmony within myself. I was out of balance with myself. And I just walked into my purpose because I began to become selfish. How I felt began to matter. And I began to listen to that voice inside of me because that voice, I promise you all that that voice inside of you is your higher self, your Anunnaki self, and it will never steal you wrong because this is what we're on a journey to becoming back to the Anunnaki, the gods, the kings and queens, whatever you want to call it, the, the, the ancestors, whatever you call it in your physical reality. That's what we're on a journey to coming back into. And that voice is your indicator that you're on the right path or not, because it's gonna make you feel different. It's gonna make you feel some kind of way. And that's when you just just, just assess yourself and, and do the detour or turn left or turn right, whatever it's telling you to do. But pay attention to it. Pay attention to it, because you are powerful. Just like in the biblical text, it is written, ye are God and all of you are children of the most high. Believe that and know that to be true, because we're powerful beings. You know, um, <clears throat> if I could speak to that point, a lot of times the family will come against me um, and I tell them, you know, and when I say family, I just mean people abroad. Right. And, um, you have to speak to people on their on their level. Yeah, they are. And, yes. And when when right before they killed or crucified Jesus, that was the same. You know, and a lot of people don't even understand the Bible. That was the same story. So they came against Jesus because he showed the people their divinity, their power. And right. then they were like, how could you say such a thing? Right. And Jesus had referenced the Old Testament. And, uh, and in, anytime he battled them, he referenced their books. And yeah. said, Isn't it written in your books? In your book. They, <laughs> this is what you said. Oh, God. This is what you said. Yeah. Because this is the same thing that the church people say. They just look at it a different way. And they go outside of themselves instead of going within. But the kingdom of God is within. It's yeah. not outside. You could go outside, but we're programmed to go outside so much because we got to go outside to go to school and ask the teacher. We got to go outside to go to the doctor and ask the doctor what's wrong with us. Go outside and ask pastor. Go outside and ask your boss. You're always going outside. That's why you don't think God is inside. You don't think nobody inside of you. 
You think you're just talking to yourself. Oh, you must be crazy because you're talking to yourself. No, you're talking to the higher self version of yourself, the God in you. That's who you're talking to. <laughs> now, either you're going to listen to it or you're going to ignore it and just drown it out and go and do what you want to do. Now, can I ask you about this uh, particular slide here, please, if you don't mind? Uh, oh, that's the one that I was talking about in my journey. That's my uh, oldest son. Okay. You know, he was actually out at college during that time, and he just sent me a text and asking me to write a book. And I'm thinking to myself, write a book. Now, meanwhile, I was doing little black history sessions in the living room when he would come home on his break. <laughs> I had no books all around the house, but I thought he was crazy when he said, Ma, you need to write a book. You know, he was like, you know, to leave a legacy behind for him and his brother, you know, because of all of the things that I try to share with them. Because you know how they talk about these generational curses, so to speak. I don't I don't believe in that. I believe that that is just the ignorance of nobody in the family wanting to change nothing. So everybody in the family being stuck on stupid. And so I said, it's going to stop with me. If I'm not going to do nothing right as a mother, I'm going to be a good mother and do this right. And teach my children about health and wellness. Teach my children about the God and the creator in the universe. Outside of Jesus, we're going to learn something different. Because everybody been taught Jesus. We've been going, grandma was going to Jesus. Grandma died going to Jesus. Mm. Damn. Damn. Everybody, the grandma died with the diabetes and all of these health issues and going to Jesus. But I wasn't doing that, not on my watch. I tell my boys all the time, I ain't raising no ducks. You ain't gonna be cracking around. <laughs> you gonna learn something when you live up out of this house right here, boo. And so that's that's my journey as a mother. You know, I just yeah, I did it for them in the beginning. You know, it's just a mother's love. And for me, you know, I needed it too. I, I didn't see myself here. I was like I said, I was trying to run from this and speaking and, and all of this. But I ran into this passion and this purpose of wanting to inspire others on a journey, and and I love it. It's so rewarding to me. Now, um, just to make sure the family knows this is 100% legit, I just want to go over this uh, screenshot real quick and point some things out. The first thing I want to point out is the date. This is from 2016, family. So this is, <laughs> yeah. you know, she just came up with something. Yeah. So, you know, because a lot of times, you know, you can, see, well, from when I was a kid, they said it's, it's easier just to look from the outside looking in than from the inside. And so somebody... Uh, was looking at you from the outside at what you had on the inside. And this is, you know, yes. and this is the son. Uh, he yes. says, you should write a book because you won't be here forever. And you're gathered and you've gathered so much information about healthy spices, about the most high and about black history. I just feel like you should share what you've learned. So all of your research gets passed on. Now, let me just stop the brother right there. Uh, <laughs> you know, one of my frustrations is that it seems like the elders aren't concerned with that information being lost or being passed on. And even for me as a master student, I'm looking for that information. And, you know, a lot of times, even my grandma seems like, well, we don't, you know, we know about it. We just don't talk about it. My grandma had an incident in her life and she was so scared. Now keep in mind, the whole family was raised, raised in church. My grandma was so scared. Her mama took her to the root doctor. I'm talking when, when worse came to worse, they didn't go to Jesus. They went to the root doctor. To the root doctor. Hey, grandma, share that story. No, we're not going to share that. Wow. So, you know, let me let, let me go back to this really quickly, because that was my concern as as not as a master teacher, not as a grown as a the child in me was looking for the elders, the child in me or, you know, the student in me was looking for the teacher and nobody wanted to teach. From the mouth of babes. Let's go back to this. Let me let me yeah. let me go back to this really quick. <laughs> or at least write like a personal book for me. Right. Just for me. Well, oh, oh. Yeah. and uh him and his brother, Jamira, yes. Okay. I think it would be really cool to have something to refer to. To refer to. Definitely. Wow. God. But another thing, just just in not in a in a bad negative way, but when we talk about the elders. <laughs> I say, I look at it like this and you might have your own take on it, but I say, you know, some, some of the elders are just really stuck and, and lost and it's all energy now. And I'm not being ugly when I say that. I say, I say, well, some of them might just have to die because see, we, 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 we reincarnate over and over and over until we evolve to higher self is how I look at it. So some of them may have to die because they're stuck on that old way of doing things, you know, and, 
they, they deeply rooted in it, you know. That's just how I feel about some of them. Now, some of them want it, but others will, they will turn, you're going to hell with the others. Mm. So I'm not going to waste my energy on that. So, I mean, <laughs> I let them be. And I appreciate, you know, you keeping that positive energy with it, uh, but still being able to tell the truth. That yeah. that really means a lot to me. Yeah. Uh, and if I could just go over this one more time for the family uh, and the listening audience, you know, for me, I know people may think, OK, well, Crumb just have guests. Well, no, it's not really like that. The people I work with are official tissue. Now, when we're dealing with the sister, hold on, let me just bring your name up here. When we're dealing with the sister Bridget Rowe, you know, she's an author. She's a publisher. A lot of y'all got a lot of y'all have a story. And you just don't even know how to get it out. She's a publisher. In addition to that family, even for me, even for me, sometimes I feel down at times. She's an inspiration. Family, y'all be playing around, you know. <laughs> I'm not going to put it out there because for me, I know I do a lot of research and learning. But sometimes, family, learning, I'm, I'm just talking for me, learning ain't enough. Yeah. Sometimes I need to be inspired. Right. I need somebody to, you know, help motivate, you know, because a lot of times I'm the person who's helping motivate everybody. Well, who's going to help motivate me? Right, right. You know, so uh, just to put it out there to the family, she's an inspirational speaker, you know, and a, uh, a, a true inspiration is that. So I see where, you know, you've done what I am just now starting to do. Not only did you speak your voice, but you were you you got from behind that computer, and this is something I'm trying to do now: is get from behind this computer and right. get into the real world. Um, right. so, you know, so uh, you were at the Essence Festival. That's this first picture right here. A guest uh, panel, uh, healing and uh, deliverance event. That's you in the middle, and then on the far right hand side, the National Association of Black Journalists. So you know, I want the family to know. Even though I'm really honestly willing to work with anybody, it doesn't matter who you are. You know, I don't care about the messenger per se. Right, right. Just to confirm to the family, when we dealing with uh, Bridget Rowe, you know, I'm not trying to focus on the messenger, but family, let's be clear. She has a powerful message. I've never been one to focus on the messenger, but let's deal with the message. And, you know, truth be told, the sister has a message. She uh, 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 she speaks her truth. And before I pass you the mic back one more time, uh, you know, something you were saying in the beginning that really resonated with me. A lot of the family is looking for facts. Okay. No problem, family. But right. What is yours. What is your truth? Right. I speak my yeah. truth. Bridget yeah. speaks her truth. And your truth is yours alone, family. Yes. You know, I feel like that is so important. And I know I watch your channel, your TV, you know, show a lot. And it, I see the facts. I see the facts. I understand that. But going back to the energy of it, speaking your truth is you speaking from your heart chakra. The heart chakra is energy. It is an electromagnetic field of energy. It's the most powerful form of energy. This is why love is the most powerful form of energy. And love is of God. And so we need to be able to penetrate and touch others with our energy. Yeah, facts is cool and all, but facts line up back to that physical, that point zero, 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 one. We need to be meeting each other with the energy side of it all, that 99.999, to have a domino effect, to like be like, when I move, you move, you know, to, to, to have that ripple effect. Because being conscious is a frequency, a God state of frequency of being. You have enough power. This is why in the biblical text that Jesus, you know how they talk about the allegory story of Jesus, the woman touching the, the hem of his garment? Because he was so lit, so on, on point, so powerful that the energy side of this, this, this being, this allegory story being would heal the sick just by passing by and touching, by putting, putting mud on the eyes, you know? Walking on water is symbolic of rising to higher self, rising to higher consciousness. It's the power, it's the energy. We can't miss that point. Facts are cool, but let's not forget the energy, babe. <laughs> That's right. That's right. And, you know, um, I had even told my son, I said to him, I said, baby, if you walk around town believing everything I say, then you 
you know, because, you know, uh, this one sister said, she said, well, you know, what truth have you come to know? I've, I've come to know my own personal truth. Your own, yes, that's it. Your truth is your truth, that's it. That's it, that's it. Everybody got you know. their own truth. Because like keep going back to the biblical text again, you know, they talk about the body of Christ. You know, everybody has a different point in the body of Christ collectively as the body. Everybody's not gonna be the ear. Everybody's not gonna be the nose. You be the part that you need to be. You could be guess what? No judgment here. You could be the dark energy worker part if that's what you want to do in your journey. You could be the alchemist, you know, you could be a voodoo lady, you could be the church lady, you could be the Jezebel. But play your role, baby. <laughs> oh, um, uh, re really quickly, sister. Some of the family was asking where to find you at, and some of the family was chiming in. Let me just kind of uh, help the family as well. So, family, when we're dealing with uh, uh, Sister Bridget Rowe, uh, her um, website is saltoftheearthpub.org, and that's what we're looking right. at right here. Let me just put this up here. That's the website. So, salt of the earth pub short for publishing salt, salt of the earth pub.org that's the website where you can find her at now um the family was also asking about your facebook page um i'm almost 100 confident well, that's my cousin uh that you know this video will be on her page as well but um she has a facebook page and it's simply her name bridget Rowe. and um i wanted to click on this right here could you tell me about the banner on your Facebook page? He who has an ear, let them hear. That is uh, the title of my book that I wrote. Um, and it talks about live foods that heals. It talks about uh, renewing your mind. It goes in depth more about my particular journey. And uh, it's available on my website as a paperback and the audio version. The audio, audio version of the book is attuned to 432 hertz of healing energy. So you can listen to me reading the book while the music is in the background playing. I sell detoxes on my website as well. My body butter, um, the alchemist oil, <laughs> hair moisturizer, you name it. My consultations are available if you needed me for seminars or whatever. It's all available at the top links on the top. Those words at the top where it says donations, empowering merchandise and personal consultation. If you click on the word, you'll be led to whatever word you clicked on and um, find out more about the products or services that I offer. And that website is saltoftheearthpub.org. Excellent, excellent, excellent. Um, and I think, uh, oh, also, also just one more time for the family as well. Uh, let me just go over here. Um, she's also on YouTube, family. And my YouTube channel at Soul of the Earth. Um, yes, that's my YouTube channel on the screen right there. So pretty easy, Salt of the Earth, saltoftheearthpub.org. And of course, uh, her book, uh, He Who Has an Ear, Let Them Hear. Right. And on my YouTube channel, I talk about various topics as well. Then you can go there and get some little facts if you're the fact type person. <laughs> But I mean, I talk about 5G, I talk about feminine energy, I, I talk about relationships, love, mold into how yourself. I talk about my Kundalini experience, you know, live foods that heal, health tips and things of that such, you know, just whatever, just to meet people where they are, you know, nothing is exempt, you know, and and we're all on a journey. I talk about even even uh, mentally and sexually stimulating the man because all is energy, sex is energy, love is energy, a look, a touch. You know, music is energy. All things are energy. And I break it down like that because everybody can understand it. It is not a religious type thing. Everybody can understand energy because that is what we are to the core of who we are. Excellent. Excellent. Um, well, with that said, I know I had to kind of keep you. I, I tried I try to do it for, for an hour uh, every time I go on. So I had to kind of hold you hostage a little bit. I see that. I told you I was trying to be short. <laughs> Um, so I think we covered everything, um, products and services. Oh, let me, let me go back over here. Products and services, uh, ebook on paperback, audio book, the transformation course, uh, 10 how to videos, be body butters, the alchemist, the alchemist oil. Now for th that one right there, 
you you've kind of got my antenna tweaking. Uh, sustained detox. Um, also, uh, quit bug quit bugging me. Parasite cleanse. Uh, I know that was a good one. Also, let me go back to the the, uh, the YouTube channel. Premature ejaculation was a topic you talked about. I said, okay. <laughs> He ain't scared to touch no top, and that's what I love about up it all. Yes, yes, yes. I'm actually about to post one today um, for women who give off masculine energy. Actually, Ooh. it's called "She's a Man and She Doesn't Know It." <laughs> Damn, so I'll be posting that in a minute after I get off the of yeah. <laughs> okay. okay. Well, with that said, I don't want to hold you hostage too much more longer. However, I did want to ask if um, you could, um, after you give your closing thoughts, I'll, you know, I'll let you give your closing thoughts. And, and after you're you're done with that, could you also say, um, you know, wh however you want to say it, peace, one love or whatever. Peace, this is your sister Bridget Rowe and you are now watching Crumb TV. But that's towards the end. I want you, you know, if, if you could for the family, could you give your closing thoughts on how we should connect? to our higher self? I feel as though we connect to our higher self by just being ourselves and understanding that it is our journey and we are on a journey not to please others and not to go outside of ourselves looking for others, but going within, going within ourselves and becoming one mind, body and soul with the God that lives inside of you. And you know how you're doing on this journey based upon how you feel. If you're feeling this ease or disharmony, like this isn't right, like I'm not getting my questions answered, seek more until you feel good. Seek more wisdom. The biblical text tells us that a fool despises wisdom and understanding. So seek the understanding for yourself. And remember, you are energy. You are powerful. You never get it wrong. It is your journey. You are who you say you are. And I am Bridget Rowe. I am Bridget Rowe, and you're watching Crumb TV. <laughs> Thank you so much, sis. I I really appreciate it. And again, to the family, this is not our first video. We already did Power of the Third Eye. Right, third Eye. Neil Glenn. You did part one. Uh, 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 that's that's on her uh, Facebook and YouTube channel. Uh, the part two is on my uh, YouTube channel as well. So uh, with that said, uh, you will see more on my platform from the sister. Um, I want to thank you so much for coming on. Thank uh, you for having me, Chrome. I really appreciate you. And I admire you so much. Keep doing what you're doing. You have a whole lot more time than what I do. I wish I could do it more like you. But like I said, I always try to watch when I can. And I really admire you. I admire your passion. Don't you quit. Because we need you. Mm. Thank you so much. I, you know, th those words really touch my heart chakra. Have a great rest of your day. We're gonna do it again soon. Okay, babe. Be blessed. All right. Now, uh, don't don't hang up. I'm just gonna close out for the family. Okay. All right. Peace. So, with that said, family, y'all know who I am. You know who I am. I'm your humble brother, Crumb. I'm thinking. I'm growing. I'm evolving. You know, at one point in time. You know, you couldn't get anything like this from Crumb, but as you can see, I'm reinventing my, reinventing myself every single day, working with the family. I'm trying to, I'm not trying to say unity. I'm trying to demonstrate unity, family. You know, in addition to that, one thing, uh, I have a manager. My manager was like, yo, you do very poorly with women. I said, I don't care. I don't care. The feminine energy will be broadcasted on my platform. I don't care. Don't nobody watch. I don't care. So with that said, family, I'm your humble brother, Crumb. 